There's a lot of confusion about this, and almost every week the story about HRT increasing risk in breast cancer seems to change in the newspapers. But, you know, there are some facts which are solid, and they haven't changed over the years. So let me tell you what they are. <clears throat> this study was published by uh, Fournier et al. in 2005, and it was, not surprisingly, not published in the press. <clears throat> but it basically looked at almost 70,000 women on different forms of hormone replacement therapy. Now, I should tell you that this, the findings of this study have since been corroborated by other scientists in Europe. But what this study shows tells you the, f the, the truth of the matter with HRT. And this is 2005. It should have been in the press. When ladies take estrogen alone, there is a slight increased risk of breast cancer. Okay? That's what that shows. So estrogen alone, there is a slight increased risk of breast cancer. When you combine estrogen with a synthetic progesterone, look what happens. You see that? But look what happens when you combine estrogen, estradiol, which is natural estrogen, with natural micronized progesterone. I said progesterone, not progestins. So progester what the scientific papers call progesterone they're often talking about synthetic versions of it. In other words, progestins. There are these. Now, when you combine those with estrogen, there is an increased risk of breast cancer. But when you combine estrogen with natural progesterone, guess what, ladies? No increased risk of breast cancer. None. You'd have thought that should have been front, line, front page press. But nowhere to be seen. So women can be given HRT safely as long as they're given estrogen with natural progesterone. It would stop the, the tide of breast cancer that has occurred with HRT. And that's been confirmed subsequently. We all now know, those, uh, those doctors, and there are some of you in the audience, who prescribe bioidentical hormones to women, we've known this, that natural progesterone protects breasts. And by the way, same study showed the same thing with deep vein thrombosis. When you combine estrogen with natural progesterone, there is no increased risk of thrombosis either. So the culprits are the synthetic progesterones combined with estrogen. That's where the problem is. Now here's the other thing I wanted to show you, ladies. <clears throat> it's not just estrogen, but it's the way your body breaks it down according to your genetics because all women will produce either non-toxic estrogen metabolites or toxic. The toxic ones can damage breast and uterus. The non-toxic ones are excreted in the, uh, in the urine. So it, how much of the toxic and non-toxic you produce is down to your genes, but you can measure that in urine. So if you are a woman who is producing a lot of these toxic estrogens, would you put that person on HRT? You see, that's what, this test is not done by doctors routinely, but it should be done when you're contemplating putting a woman on any hormones, especially estrogen, because you want to know how she's going to metabolize it. Is she going to generate toxic estrogen that's going to damage her estrogen-sensitive tissues or not? It's a simple urine test that's available to doctors if they bother to look. So here's the good news, and, and I want to come off this slide with a piece of good news. Even if you're a toxic estrogen producer, ladies, there is an easy way to switch you to a non-toxic estrogen producer. And this slide is showing something called DIN. DIN is from cruciferous vegetables. And what it does, uh, uh, and what all cruciferous vegetable extracts do, is they switch your, they influence your gene expression so that you express the enzymes that make you break down estrogen safely, as opposed to this group. And I've seen that time and time again in my own practice. I've seen women go from a top, being toxic estrogen producers to non-toxic over a period of three to six months, just by switching what they take in nutritionally on a daily basis. Would that reduce their risk of damaging their breasts? Absolutely it would. And it's an example of what we call epigenetics or nutrigenomics, where nutrients are influencing gene expression. 
And this is, this is from the study, or one of the studies that shows this. This is a woman with breast cancer. Here's her surrounding normal tissue, not staining for these toxic 16 hydroxyestrogens. But here's a sample from the breast cancer tissue. And what you see is the cancerous tissue has, is highly stained for these toxic estrogens, but the surrounding normal tissue is not. So it doesn't mean it's causal, but there's definitely an association that we need to be paying attention to. All right. Nutrigenomics, that's what we're talking about. And it's not only cruciferous vegetables that influence this detoxification. Uh, exercise does it, ladies. Omega-3 does it. And iodine does it. 